Assalamualaikum. Good morning everyone here. Afendi Saleh here. Waalaikumsalam. Kita Afendi. All right. Good morning. Can hear yep. you loud and clear. Same here, same here. Your voice so is clear here. as well. Yep. So I think I'll you can be. you can test the functionalities lah for the webex. Sure, sure. Yep. Sure. Before I display the QR attendance for the students. Um, show host, change audio, Q and A, setting, shoot, statistics, share. Share screen. Oh boy. That was instruction. Try all transition. Oh boy. Solution file. Is it the screen sharing? Let me test, yeah? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Sure, sure. Uh, share screen, start broadcast. Okay, I'll be one, three, two, one. That's my broadcast. Your screen share will never be stored locally. Never be stored locally. locally. Remotely, yep. We can okay. see that. Mm -hmm. So I share my PowerPoint now. Can you see the slide now? Yes, we can see the slide. All Perfect. Right. Okay. okay. So, um, so I don't need to turn on my camera for this. Yeah. 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 Sure. Sure. No problem. All right. The okay. most important thing is the content. <laughs> the content. And the yeah, voice. the content. And the voice. Yes. I go back to Webex, double tap, and I do this. I do stop sharing. It will go back to the Webex form. Yep. Screen sharing has ended. Okay. One more time. Okay. Because uh, screen sharing, uh, give, me, give me one more. Go start broadcast. Three, two, one. Broadcasting. Um, I go to my to my PowerPoint. You can see that one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. by the way, just for your information, actually, you can annotate. Huh? You can actually draw. You can actually draw on the presentation slide. I, I think there's oh, a yeah. button. There's a ribbon button yes, on yes. the left. Yeah, you can actually yep. draw it. Yeah. Okay. So it is being, it is shown in your screen. Yep, yeah? we can see. We can see two circles yeah. and uh, is it is it like yeah. glasses there? Yeah. I don't know. Nice. All right. Okay, cool. okay, it's perfect. All right. Okay. Just we'll just wait, I guess. So all right. Uh, so I think I need I have to share the QR attendance. So uh -huh. I think you can stop sharing for now, lah. Okay. So yep, I'm sharing the QR uh, QR okay. attendance for the students. Okay. Okay, I think I think we, we can start uh at nine thirty sharp lah. Sure, you can prompt me okay. to uh for me to, 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 to Okay, start. I get that Wendy. Okay. Sure. 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 So are you from working from home or you're from campus now? Uh from home. Because apparently uh campus internet is not as good as my in home internet. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Because campus internet, it's not stable. It's not stable. I think like around 10 to 15 minutes, it will suddenly uh, 
stop connecting. So it's bad. So and, uh, throughout this semester, I have to do uh, online lecture, online class from home actually. Oh goodness. Yeah. They should pay you stable. extra. I think, I think they should. pay you extra for that. <laughs> but it's okay lah, internet okay lah. I think the internet also is quite affordable now. And the speed is okay for me. 300 Mbps are like around less than 150. So I think it's okay. So there will be uh, any lecturers joining us for today, uh, today, uh, this morning's session? Is it? Uh, the head of panels, yeah. The head of panels, I think Azrin and PC is going to be here as well. But I'm not sure about uh, other lecturers lah. Mm -hmm. But okay. the head of panel should uh, should be here lah, uh, PC and Azrin. And Dr. Sharifah? No. And Dr. Sharifah. I'm not sure about Dr. Sharifah, but then uh, uh, if she is here, then she is here lah. <laughs> if not, then uh, it's okay. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm, sh I'm sharing the... QR code for the students yet. Actually, I have to open two QR codes at once. Because we have two section of students here. So this is for the purpose of uh, taking attendance, yes? Yep. Okay. I think uh, TC students can uh, scan the QR code on the left and for pre-TCs, they can scan on the right. Oh, this is the whole class joining or only for the uh, social, cultural, housing, web-based? Uh, 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 web actually, I open to all PCC students. Right. So they can they can listen to the lecture. I think I think it's beneficial to them also. So yep, I am op I open to all PC students lah basically. Plus I already sent out the invitation to each of the group lah PC group. So how are you doing, Architect okay, Fendi? <laughs> personally, you know, professionally, it's too different. It's too uh, different. So, pro pro uh, I think I have to answer you professionally because I, I've known you for like 15 years now. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember me or not because uh, back back in 2007, if not mistaken, uh, you 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 were teaching this uh, architecture history, if not mistaken, in UTMKL. Oh, you in were in UTMKL. that class? Yeah, I was, I was in that class. Zaman, Zaman Yuri dulu. Zaman Yuri dulu, yes. Zaman Yuri dulu. So... <laughs> So it's funny how things turn out, lah. Basically, uh, you were my lecturer right back then, and Yuri were, uh, was my lecturer back then, and now Yuri got UK, and now you are professional and back. practicing part three, <laughs> and I'm here teaching as well, become uh, lecturer. Oh, so, uh, why did you uh, continue your studies at in UK? Uh, uh who me? Huh? Uh, no, I'm I'm UTM, born and bred. Uh, until your degree, after, PhD, or yeah, after uh, actually, I, after I finish my diploma, I straight uh, continue my study in UTM for degree, and then I was offered this fast track program to do PhD straight instead of doing master. So, oh, yeah. so yeah. alang 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 alang, I buat terus lah PhD kan right? because uh, it's a good opportunity. So I finish it uh, back in 2018. Uh, okay. Then I, I I I was working in Unimas actually for one year plus before I enter UTM. So I entered UTM like roughly around last year lah. Mm -hmm. So since uh, graduated, uh, have you I uh, know uh, try practicing as I did. I did. Yes. Uh, I think like less than a year lah. Less than a year because uh the offer the PhD offer is actually the timeline is actually uh limited. I mean I have to lapo diri within seven or eight months I think. So I have so, I have to start practicing lah. Were you practicing in uh, uh, what uh, developer's office, architect's office? It's an architect so, office. In it's, it's actually in Sabah. Uh, they call it architect OMA, not the OMA architect yang international tu. It's a it's a local <laughs> OMA architect. Kau Ram Kurhas lah. Ah, not not Ram Kurhas lah. <laughs> Ni dia macam apa tu? Uh, nama je OMA. Right. 
So nah, you sedap lah. Baik saya sudah kerja. Uh, apa nama you? Past one year. Mm-hmm. You've been handling uh, maskers only, no? Uh, for 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 this semester, I'm actually the thesis coordinator lah, and okay. I'm I'm actually teaching third year as well for perdana student. Okay. Thank okay. you. So, phew, got 2007, yeah? 2007? I, I, I cannot remember what subject you thought. I think it's architecture history or something. Yeah. And well, I, used, I, I used to sit in front. I used to sit in front. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I still remember you, architect FND. Hey, I, I remember this guy. He used to, he used to really teach me. Huh. Subject, uh, 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 and one of, one of two studio class, studio, studio session, design studio. Ah, the rest are all uh, architecture history, right? Uh, architecture history, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lepas tu, oh, lepas class. five or six. Yeah, okay, okay. Tak tak ingat lah, Izik. <laughs> <laughs> tapi tapi lepas seven, I think six years old. Apa nama, uh-huh. I started uh, evolving in UTM's uh, PCC. Used to uh-huh. call space, right? Space. Apa nama, space, external panel. Yeah, so it has been consistent lah, year, year in, year out. I see. Yup, and I I got opportunity, apa nama, to do the same for UM mm. for about a year, uh, becoming their external creed, uh, uh, UTAR, UTAR, T-A-R, TAR College, T-R-C. UTAR. TAR College. Uh-huh. TAR-C. And this one mysterious college in Negeri Sembilan, in Mante. Oh, they is it is it college lecture. legenda? College legenda used to be called no, no, no. college legenda, if I'm mistaken. No, eh? They, they called me for lecture once, and then at that time they haven't got any accreditation uh-huh. uh, for their diploma session, uh, for the diploma course. Uh-huh. And now the whole school is closed. Really? I could not recall what's the name of the school. It's inside some kind of jung, uh, apa nama, estate, jungle kind of setting. Uh, newer buildings, ah, it's, it's quite mysterious. Lah. <laughs> so not, so it, not the, the, co- the school is closed. College has been closed down because because of when they even issue and whatnot. Lah. I is see. It, what's the name? It's in Mantin, Negeri Sembilan. Mantin. Mantin, yeah. Hmm. I I believe it's College Lagenda, lah. College Lagenda. Uh, ah, that is their new name. Previously, it's a. Uh, it's not that name. It's a it's an English Chinese kind of name, like Painton something like that. Ah, uh-huh. ah. Uh, tapi tu lah. That's why. <laughs> so so the whole college uh has been closed lah. Not 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 the architect architecture program lah. Oh, for sure they've been closing down. But I don't know what happened to that to that college now. It seems like a oh, rundown down college. So that's my problem. I think. Guys. Hmm. See. Uh, Doctor, what's his name? Doctor Suhana and Doctor Basri's time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Basri and Doctor Suhana, right? Uh, I don't right. know what happened to them. I don't know what happened to them. And uh, I heard Doctor, uh, who's Doctor one Basri more. is not in 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 good health now. He's not. Ah. Huh? Uh, Doctor Basri is not in good health lah. What I know. Oh, From I see. Uh, Doctor Suhana's uh, Facebook. Uh-huh. Both have yes. I think the same goes with uh, Puan No as well, right? You remember Puan No? Uh, Puan, 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 Puan No is Gelaran. I don't know what's the name. Uh, apa nama? Puan No. <laughs> uh, she, she, used, she used to teach in UTMKL as well. I think during that time that you taught me, I think she, she was there as well, teaching first year. Puan No. Uh, I, forgot the, I forgot the name. Uh, apa nama dia? But it's okay. But so, Puan No also, I heard it's not in good health lah. Diabetic actually. So is it you plan to you plan to be a uh, academician all the way throughout? Sampai habis, sampai, sampai, uh, sampai looks looks like it lah because my expertise uh, definitely uh, I punya strength too is uh it's, it's not on practice lah, it's actually more on research actually. <laughs> so I think I'll go What's I'll your, go that path. Uh, your yeah? PhD specializes in it's actually um uh, ethnic Wait, architecture. Fine. Ethnic architecture. Eth- Ethnic architecture. So, uh, it's not uh, my expertise is not really into architecture per se. But then I actually love going 
into history, into culture, okay. and uh, a little bit of ethnography lah, anthropology actually. So I love to go and adventure into rural area and do studies. So my PhD was uh, the topic was the uh, was the same lah basically because uh, I have to go into the rural part in Sabah, so where I have to spend like weeks in the rural part. I have to live uh, <laughs> along the coastal area like that to to do my study. Oh. Yeah. What's about your... architecture? It Dr. Sani, Dr. Sani. Oh, Abdullah Sani ni. Abdullah Sani, yeah. Abdullah Sani. She oh, okay. he has since retired lah. I think he re, he recently retired only, like uh March March I think last March eh. Ah, oh, okay. March is his last last period. Uh, ni. But it's the landscape architecture lecturer, right? Is he not? He is an architecture, but then uh his PhD is uh heavy leaning towards landscape actually. Dr. Sani. Uh, uh-uh. Okay. But then he's just it's my supervisor lah. My my studies throughout I I did myself <laughs> without any guidance, proper guidance. So I did myself my studies. Learning wow. my, uh, myself along along the way lah. But it's okay lah, it's passion, right? Uh, as long as you got passion then uh, I don't think it's a problem. Okay, uh, still waiting for the rest of the students. I think we, uh, not many actually scanning the QR code. We have like 11 uh, pre-thesis and 7 TC students. Uh, students, can you, can yeah, you guys... Attendance uh, compulsory, does it contribute to marks or to anything? Is it... uh, actually, no, but then uh, for the record, for the record, uh, we need to uh, record the attendance lah, just in case we were asked a little on at the end of the semester. Okay, it's already 9.30. Uh, Architect Fendi, your, your internet is okay, right? Uh, because you've been uh, you've been disconnected for a while. I'm not sure. And then your voice is uh, hardly can be can be heard. Lah. So far, so good from here. I can hear you okay. Uh, but I don't know whether it's my internet or your, your internet. I'm not sure, but I hope it's my internet. Lah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean the... yep. Uh. The QR code, uh, for nama, the movement on the screen is all smooth. I can see, I can see your video quite okay. No, no, no problem at all. Ah, uh, I think I hope it's okay lah. So it's eight guys out of fourteen, and here is eleven out of five. That's not, that's not right. Uh, no, no, because <laughs> because uh, the students under me are uh, for pretty C's like. Only registered five students, but actually you uh, can actually uh, insert more lah, uh, including the rest of the panel. Okay. For TC is only eight eh. Uh, I think it should be fourteen, right? For fourteen, fourteen, uh, eight uh, out of fourteen, currently. Eight out of fourteen, yeah. But for pre TC, it should be in, more lah. Were you in apa nama UTM last week for the grade? Yes, right. Yeah, I was. I was. I was on the uh, the room number five, ke? Yeah, I was in UTM okay. last week. We should meet up lah, from rooms to rooms. I, I just yeah, sure. I just left last last week after ending the session. Uh, what time ended uh, last week? Uh, lama pukul apa lah? No ne. About three. About three. About, oh, quite late lah. Uh, my 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 I think my room ended around two or less than two I think. One thirty. Uh -huh. 1.30 ended and then I straight go back lah because I have to drive back to JB. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> the next day I had the studio so I have to, nak tanah, I have right. to go back uh, okay. fast lah. Okay. And Azar was around too, I guess? Azar, no, Azar, Azar wasn't around. Uh, he oh, yeah, he sure. was supposed to be in my room. He was to be, he was supposed to be in my panel as well lah. But uh, he cannot make it last week. So the next, in the next face-to-face uh, -face script, he uh, should be there lah. He should be there. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Reminiscing old times. <laughs> <laughs> that that old bangunan kayu still there, so da, 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 da. Oh yeah, but bangunan kayu, I, I, I think still there lah. But then the the studio that you used to teach us, the small lecture room too, memang dah dia melish lah. Yeah. No no, no trees, no trees left lah. The line dah. I think last week I went to ETMKL lah, macam, I dah tak kenal lah ETMKL. Like it was, <laughs> like it used to lah, like it's so different. Yeah, yeah. Except yeah. the back part lah, the studio kayu tu, uh, still the same. 
Studio Kak Yu, ya. Okay, kita Fendi, I think uh, we can start uh, within one minute. Uh, it's already 9.30. So uh, mm-hmm. I I think you ha- you have all the time. Uh, actually, I I allocate like around three hours for you to give a talk. But then if you oh, can finish early, oh. it's okay lah. No, no, it's just a, it's just yeah I know. But then it's just the time for you to uh, okay. If let's say you want to elaborate, ke nak bercerita pasal sure. anything, ke, you can you can always go My... extra lah. <laughs> I have time my presentation. It only yeah. like the, the 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 duration of a grid itself twenty. 30 minutes. Talk. I see. I see. But yeah, yeah you have the time. Yeah. You have the time actually. Uh, you can uh, give a talk like like one hour or two hours like that. Within that lah. Within that. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. Okay. But then actually this morning is your is all yours lah. Basically, I give. This all right. All sure. Yours. So the panel later on, if they have a session with uh, each of the head panel, they can do it in the afternoon. Okay. okay I think I think students please scan your QR code. Uh, thesis on the left, uh, pre-thesis on the right before we start our lecture input uh, number two by architect Fendi. So please scan the QR code, final call, final call before the train moves. Okay, please scan the QR code before I stop sharing. Pre-thesis on the right, thesis on the left. One more minute. 11, we start at, we, we start at 9.35, eh? Sure, sure. Chong is here, Ray is here, Shahira is here. Wan Shamila is here. Yasir is here. Ramai tak ada lagi ni. Puasa lepas lepas sahur tu tidur balik kan sini. Your weekend lepas, lepas sahur tidur balik lah. Dia orang on apa nama apps ni kemudian baring ya dengar. Ha. That's that's a that's a good thing about online punya lecture ni. Boleh dengar sampai baring. Okay, I think I have to stop sharing. 9:35 already. So I kita FND, I give uh, okay, the okay. webex to you. So uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, kita Fendi. Bus. Sharing. Share screen. Start broadcast. Three, two, one. Okay, we can see the slide. You can see the slide, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So I start now, is it? Dr. Is it? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. The the center stage is all yours. Okay. Morning, students. Good morning, lecturer. Or should I say good morning, lecturers, and good morning, students? Um, again, thank you for inviting me. My name is Afani Saleh. I am from Akidi Architects in Shah Alam. So for uh, this semester, I'm involving in um, as part of the external panel, external grid panel. And um, yep, uh, some of you might have uh, met me last week during the face-to-face grid. So for today, I was invited by Dr. Yuzik to give a, a lecture input for this semester. And um, the topic that I propose to be giving is on social housing. Okay, so this uh, will be a, a short lecture actually. There will be about 60 slides. Um, I will do a lot of annotation on the slides and it, will be, it won't be word heavy. Uh, it will be audio heavy, so you got to rely on what I'm explaining and um, the accompanying visuals. Uh, I think the whole duration of my, my, my speech, my talk would be between 20 to 30 minutes, 40 minutes tops. 
and because I'm guessing early in the morning, uh, stretching lecture to two hours would be would be very much taxing to the listeners. So so here goes, yeah. So I'll be starting. Uh, so there's uh, to start with, I collect few images of social housing, affordable housing in Malaysia. So we all recognize this 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 image, yeah. In our cities, this type of building where space for cars and pedestrian collide, huge looming buildings, dwelling building, uh, more apparent in the city centers in Kuala Lumpur, in Penang, in JB, in Selangor, they are everywhere. Yeah, uh, This sort of building, usually designed and built in a super block format, 15 to 20 story high, usually 30 to 36 units per floor, yeah? Huge building, it's unmissable. This is a kind of architecture that cannot be hidden. It, it won't be hidden. It, it is necessary to the society. Some says this sort of architecture is ugly, but beauty is always in the eye of beholder. But if you look closely, beauty or aesthetic is not in the game, yeah? Uh, with its yard exposed, with its structural grid can be seen from outside, with no means to uh, um, uh, giving some cosmetic to it, with its water tank right there looking at you. Some say it can be agreeable that this is an eyesore to the cityscape itself. But what can we do as designer, as architects, to alleviate this problem yep if it is a problem if you if you if you see it as one whenever social housing apartment did some sort of customization to their building to their facade to their architecture i see it as inadequacies in design awnings are everywhere because window hood could not chase the rain away, will not keep out the rain away. So this is, this is part of our psyche, this is part of our cityscape, this is part of our built environment. I'm not sure how many of you have ever lived or currently live in uh, social housing or in affordable building, affordable housing building, but I myself, um, I myself have experienced Banama, being in such building those days, yeah, renting here during my during my uh, bachelor times. Uh, and this is this is what we we face every day. The space for occupant, and the space for uh, vehicular, the space for utilities always got intruded. Yep. Here is. Here is. Extra dish. These examples are good because they have a roof on top. The one, the one that does not have any sort of covering, this would be, this would be usually be a mess. Yeah. So yes, we all, to 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 uh, based on our own experience, we fully recognize Malaysia, so Malaysian social housing and its associated issues. We all recognize that. Uh, some of us have a better degree of recognition. Some of us only know it from a distance. But this sort of building, uh, as an architecture student, as an architecture practitioner, it's inevitable. We cannot escape from this uh, building. Right. So this lecture today, uh, this talk today rather, is uh, is a short talk about affordable housing. Uh, with a a small caption of an experience in practice. So based on my uh, almost 20 years experience of working, I've encountered, handled, completed, designed, delivered many affordable housing. And I guess with these experiences, there can be a teachable moment. There can be a teachable experiences that can be shared uh, to students. Yep.
Uh, but on the affordable housing that we uh, I want to uh, uh, share today, the focus will be on rumah selangorku. This is a specific term uh, used for the state of uh, Kerajaan Negeri Selangor for their affordable housing policy. They coined it as rumah selangorku. And for the past eight years, I guess, uh, this has been in place. And... Um, I'm, I'm very much uh, familiar with this uh, typology. So throughout the uh, presentation today, uh, my experience will be in line with the policies, with the typology in Rumah Selangorku Development for Negeri Selangor. Before I start, uh, perhaps it's good to um, explain a bit about the term. I guess the term social housing, statutory housing, and affordable housing are very much interchangeable. In the academic realm, the term social housing is very much in use, especially in the UK, especially in the European uh, academic milieu, especially in the, in the US. Uh, uh, in the States, they call it projects. In the, in the US, they call it flats. In the UK, they call it flats. But very much so, it is a social housing. It denotes the meaning of the government providing houses to its population. As simple as that. This is a government sanctioned dwelling. Uh, in Malaysia, the term statutory housing also been used. Statutory housing. My client refers to their product as statutory housing. It gives meaning uh, to the fact that authority that the one who impose uh, statutory housing on them. Yeah, statutory means it's a regulated law. Okay. But the more popular terms, more politically correct term for it that we always use is affordable housing. And to me, this, this uh, term is much more accurate, correct, it's much more tepat lah. It's, it's describing the product better. It's providing the building better. Because historically, in the 80s, the terms that have been used is always rumah kos sederhana or rumah kos, rumah kos rendah or rumah kos sederhana. There's one more type which is rumah kos sederhana rendah. Right? In the 80s, in the 90s, in the early 2000, this is the term that's been used. Okay. But perhaps uh, the, 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 the term cost rendah, cost sederhana is quite vague, right? And uh, it, it, it comes into our society, the terms affordable. Affordable housing. It, 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 this term replaces the term of rumah kos rendah and rumah kos rendah. When does it happen? I'm not quite sure. But I, I, if I can sense it, it's around early 2000s and, 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 and beyond. Lah. Right. Now, now, the term has been widespread. The public knows it. The population knows it. The, pol the, the, the politicians using it. The, the policy makers are also using it. So we as designers, we use, we use this more politically correct term, affordable homes, for, for uh, describing this kind of a product. It's very rare for me as a practitioner use the term social housing anymore or statutory housing for that matter. Now, uh, for your information, Nama student, the term affordable housing is the generic term. From state to state, the, the, they give their own uh, naming to it. For example, in rumah, in wilayah persekutuan, they call it rumah whip. They call it rumah whip, whip as in wilayah persekutuan. In Johor, rumah mampu biaya Johor, RMBJ. Uh, there are several um, government agency uh, uh, give, uh, providing service to provide uh, affordable homes, such as Prima Berhad. They are a project perumahan satu Malaysia. 
There's one more initiative by government agency called PP1AM, which providing perumahan mampu milik, affordable housing for all penjawat awam, uh, government servant. They call it uh, Papa A, PP1AM. It's very difficult to pronounce. And in Negeri Selangor, uh, there's RSKG, Rumah Selangor Ku, uh, which takes into effect about eight years ago. So every state, uh, Negeri Sembilan, Melaka, have their own uh, ha affordable housing initiatives. So you get the hang of it, yeah? Uh, my presentation is, uh, I have very much less wording uh, and the explanation comes from me verbally, yeah? So let me proceed. Okay, so today the structure of this uh, presentation, of this talk would be uh, me explaining what is affordable homes, why is it needed, how do I design it in the office, and issues surrounding affordable homes. So that will be the structure, that will be the content. Uh, upon uh, completing 30 minutes of listening to me, I guess uh, what I'm aiming is uh, today's for you guys, for today's takeaway, it, there will be two parts of your, of your objective. Number one, you'll be able to understand the issues surrounding contemporary affordable housing projects in Malaysia from the perspective of a practitioner. Yep. Uh, architects like myself practicing building designing affordable homes and the second part of the objective would be how to deliver a responsive design within constraints constraints and limit so i will be explaining uh, what is my tools what are my instrument what are my strategies uh, when i uh, approach affordable housing as a project and given its limit of cost, given its limit of density, and how do I maneuver all this limit and deliver what I call a responsive design? So, at least at the end of the day, uh, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, students, uh, this is the objective that I'm trying to uh, disseminate to you. Now, let's talk about the first part, the what part. To understand affordable housing, you must understand what is free market housing. Free market housing is the what you call normal housing. Lah. Those terrace houses, semi-D, bungalow, those mass housing is free market housing. Free market housing is very much straightforward. From purchaser, the, the relationship of free market housing is purchaser bought the houses from the developer directly. There's no third party involved. Okay. The contract is between the purchaser, the house owner, pay money, bid and sell to developer, and the developer only governed by Housing Developers Act, uniform building by law, and local authorities, local authority law. That's all. Very simple. We are much very familiar with this. But with affordable housing, there is housing authority involved. Now, I'm not talking about local authorities such as Majlis Bandaraya Shalam, such as Majlis Bandaraya Iskandar Putri. No, this is local authority. I'm talking about housing authority. In affordable housing, authority housing authority makes policy and this policy governs the relationship between house purchaser and housing developer and and that relationship is illustrated in the next slide okay for affordable housing is all started with the policy outlined by the state government The state government, in this case, uh, uh, Kerajaan Negeri Selangor, through their planning committee, uh, State Planning Committee, SPC, they outline uh, what is the definition of affordable homes. What is the requirement 
four affordable homes. They outline the policy uh, surrounding it, the selling price, the density, the 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 bumi putra percentage, the the meaning of affordability, the definition of eligibility. Uh, so all this policy is being uh, uh, is being governed, is being drafted, is being approved by state government, which the the approving party is the uh, Menteri Besar's office. Yeah, from there, the enforcing agency is Lembaga Perumahan dan Hartanah Selangor. Okay, this of uh, this agency. The office uh, currently is in uh, under the uh, SUK Negeri Selangor, and they are the one who is enforcing. Sorry. They are the one who is on. The state government did the did the policy. The Lembaga Perumahan is the one who is enforcing the policy. They are the enforcer. Okay. All, all private developers conduct must follow enforcement from LPHS. Okay. In Negeri Selangor, any house, house buyer, any purchaser who wants to purchase affordable homes, they must make their registration to the Lembaga Perumahan. They cannot do the registration directly to the developer. So that's the relationship. That's the first uh, responsibility uh, of the purchaser. They do the registration to the Lembaga Perumahan Hartanah Selangor. Yeah? And Lembaga Perumahan Hartanah Selangor, they give the registered name, they do the vetting, they do the processing, they do the approve, they, they are the approving party because they are the enforcer. And they give those names to private developer. And it's the task of private developer to call these guys and advertise their affordable homes. That's the whole relationship. So the private developer here taking all the what you, what you call uh, policy instruction from this party and do the selling to this party. Simple as that, yeah. So the developer does not have a say in selling price. They don't have a say to who they can sell to. They cannot decide what is the facilities, what is the apartment size. They cannot. They don't have that say. They must follow hundred percent policy from the state government. Okay, and purchaser they cannot negotiate the selling price. They cannot negotiate the product. They cannot negotiate the uh, uh, unit size, all governed by these guys. They can only buy and purchase from private developer. Lah. Okay. Where are you? Where Where are we as architects in this scenario? We are still holding our traditional, not traditional, lah, our conventional apa nama role. We are the consultant to the private developer. Uh, we don't have a say on what is the policies are. We cannot influence how the en the enforcer doing their works. We don't have a direct contract to the purchaser. We only have contract to our client, which is the private developer. But, sorry. Uh, although we don't have, uh, we uh, we are not a, a, a privy the contract with the purchasers and others as consultant we must fully know what are these policies and its associated rules because we are the one who is going to design affordable homes we are going the one who is going to advise the developer on how to plan this affordable home because the policies in uh, state government is only in a written form, in a document, in a gazetted document, right? It is us who, who, who is needed to translate this document, these policies, 
into a built environment. Okay. Now, that's the scenario. Why does this scenario happen in the first place? Well, the biggest issue is free market housing is unaffordable. A research by Kazana Research Institute, KRI, found that the unaffordability of free market housing is three times of what Mal uh, general Malaysians can afford. Three times. Meaning, if I can give a simplistic example, majority of rakyat Malaysia can afford a 300,000 ringgit property. 300,000. Majority. According to our household need. Household income. 300,000. But the average price of free market housing is 900,000 ringgit. Lebih kurang, eh? So it's three times more. So this drives the need to have affordable housing, a controlled price. Controlled price. Because free market housing is determined by market forces. It's not, it's, if you, you don't talk about fault here. You talk about how the, how the overall market uh, supply and demand works. That's number one, affordability. Secondly, from affordability, it comes to the fact that those who can afford free market housing is only the upper part of society. The T20, tinggi 20, the higher M40. Those of, those, these guys can afford free market housing. Rumah teres, 900,000 ringgit, ataupun uh, semi-D of 1.2 million, bungalow of 4 million ringgit, apartment of uh, half a million ringgit, these guys can afford. But lower M40 and the bawah, the B40 guys, they, they have resorted now, the situation is, based on KRI research, they have to resort to uh, rental. Affordable, affordability of housing is not in their game. They, 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 they just could not afford it. Yeah, they have to rent. So it is the task of the government, who else? The task of the government to provide affordable housing. But the problem is <laughs> the government don't have any, that much money to build for the, for the society. For, 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 so the government can only make policies. They impose, they force private developer to provide affordable home, affordable housing at a, a control selling price when the, the private developer wants to do free market housing. They, they force, yeah? it's a forceful policy. Private developer cannot escape from uh, building affordable homes. For example, uh, my clients, Sam Dabi, they have a lot of land bank. When their township is above, above 50 acres, 50 acres and above, they are subjected to build affordable homes. You get what I mean? Meaning, whenever my client wants to do their free market housing, say 1,000 unit, they have to do a certain percentage of affordable housing of certain percentage. So, it is a forceful policy done by our government to ensure the population, the rakyat, got uh, its uh, its uh, share of housing. It's a complex issue. Lah. So what is the policy talking about? What is the policy outlined by the uh, State uh, Planning Committee, by the Kerajaan Negeri? Okay. It's uh, far-ranging from, from the planning side to the, to the maintenance of the property itself. From the planning side, it's, the policy stipulates uh, any housing developer with land size uh, 50 acre and above must provide must provide affordable housing. For example, so anyone who wants to be a, a property developer must know this uh, planning policy. Uh, the planning policy also states, states what sort of density 
that must be provided by by uh, by the by the developer is it uh, one acre 60 units one acre 90 units one acre 120 units the policy states by the apa nama the government stipulates that private developer can only follow so the policy the policy done by by it turning complicated by the government dictates what the developer needs to do this is developer okay the policy also line out about uh, the meaning uh, the the definition of who can buy affordable homes this is very important because we don't want the afford, uh, the government don't want the affordable homes becoming a um, speculative uh, speculative uh, property right they don't want the rich people to buy all those uh, affordable homes and um and 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 rent it out yeah they they, they want to curb that uh, practice so the government define who can register to buy the affordable homes what is their ability, eligibility what is the, the rules and terms regarding that so the the most well known rules are the household income must be less than 10000 ringgit you can buy a uh, rumah selanguku you must be anak negeri selangor you can buy rumah selanguku if it's your if you if you have a uh, property before this you cannot buy rumah selanguku so those are the rules outlined by the by the state planning committee now that's the developer this is for the buyer sorry this is for the buyer okay the policy also dictates what is the architecture would be right they dictate the unit size they dictate the specification all unit must have ceramic tiles at, at the basic i we, i cannot design the affordable homes uh, with uh, cement render at toilets for example developer cannot use apa nama a door without frame for example all the specifications is line up okay so the basic minimum quality is there governed by the governed by the policy the policy also states what is the what is the this is architect lah call it architect what is the selling price so for example in negeri selangor the selling price of rumah selangorku is 250k for a unit of 1000 square feet one car park now the challenge is developer by hook or by crook they must build this rumah this affordable affordable homes using their money private developers money and sell at this price so the 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 challenge is how not to lose money in doing this because more often than not when private developer build this affordable home they don't earn money they don't gain tak ada profit tak untung pun usually it's negative 1% ROI negative 2% ROI negative 7% ROI it's never in double digit lah usually they have to do this because they are forced to do it and and they compensate back uh, this uh, loss by selling the free market product lah okay i'll talk about that later yeah okay so so this affordable homes is many things to many people it is a different thing to different people what you are looking at now this is my project in banda bukit raja klang or saim dabi it has been completed this is rumah selangor that we did what my office did it's completed uh, a year ago okay this when i when i do some sort of uh, assessment reflection to it rumah selangorku is such a product that it means different thing to different people okay to purchaser it is home it is it is a home they don't see it as affordable home this is all they can afford yeah they don't see it as affordable home like how i the designer see it they don't don't see this as affordable home as what the politicians see it no they see it as their first 
home actually it's not a house to them it's a home first home they see it as their place uh, for their kids to play safely for their children to to mingle around in the kindergarten for the husband to see the wife socialize at the uh, at the at the, at the hall at the, for the for for them to you know it's a, it's a proper home they don't see it as a as a economic equation done by the government no so as designer you must you uh, within the limit and constraint that i that i outlined just now within the policy that i outlined just now you must we must design it with with this thinking in mind right uh, negotiate with the cost so that the living room have enough lighting so that for all the bedrooms doesn't face uh, dingy air wells for example because we are providing homes that people are going to live years and years and build families there most of purchasers how home owner for this rumah selangoku are um, a, a, a starter family we call it a starter nucleus family a husband and wife young couple young couple young married couple actually young couple with one or two kids that's all so this is the profile um uh, their household income usually uh, not uh, the law says uh, not more than 10000 ringgit uh, usually the ranging is uh, from 5000 ringgit to 8000 ringgit this is the bracket lah this is the bracket they own one car uh uh and and in their previous half house ownership is they are renting that is the profile uh and from the government point of view these are the lower m40 uh for m40 people lah okay so we are designing for this for this for for these people yeah to, so so i'm i'm asking just now Rumah Selanguku means many things to many people. To purchase it's a home. Okay. To authority, it's numbers. They want to provide as much numbers as possible, providing housing as much as possible to the population. Because we are shortage of housing. Uh, that's the that's the situation with Malaysia today. Yeah. Some argue that authority provide housing because they have a, a larger agenda on to, uh, for themselves uh, they want to increase uh, population at certain area to gain voting voting numbers for the purpose of election and whatnot that's a ballot box well you can argue in that way if you are if you want to get a uh, political about it but more often than not housing is a political issue housing is a political tools when you provide houses to the population you are winning their hearts when you are providing housing to the to the people you are gaining their trust uh, you are uh, securing the votes uh, to some extent so it is it can be a political tool so so that's why the authority the first thing that they impose is density density in this case gentlemen in the in the in the gentlemen, students in the in the 3d that you see here here this building is 660 units it is designed it is within 10 acres so it's around one one acre to 60 units this number is imposed by the authority they ask developer to to build this this density right uh they uh as designer we don't know why how how and why they come up with the number i i have no idea much money they petik number ni i have no idea why not why is it not one is to 55 why not one is to 70 why not one is to 30 I, I, we have no idea it is it is from the, from them and from them only uh, we build according what 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 numbers they they ask us to yeah so that's why the questions of numbers is always 
apa nama link to uh, political agenda but but i i don't want to see it uh, from that lens i want to see it from the fact that uh, the general population needs houses they deserve good architecture uh, they deserve a uh, choice they can rent if they want they can own a house if they want so uh, uh, choice is always good for the people yeah okay so for the authorities it's always about numbers for the developer they look at these affordable homes sorry to say yeah, as burden as burden beban they are forced to build this thing forced to kalau ikut dia orang ni kalau ikut private developer they don't want to build affordable housing they rather their land in their township build a free market housing and that's not a that's not a wrong attitude that is a, that's what they are man they are developer a private entity whose objective is to make money you cannot fault that it's not it is how the market works yeah to developer it's the government's uh, responsibility who needs to build housing but to the uh, but 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 the law doesn't say like that the, the, the law says if you want to be a private developer if you want if your land size is such and such and such we will impose on you to build uh, the uh, uh, affordable homes you have no there's there's no two way about it so this is a burden to them and when it is a burden to them they will make it as 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 as, as cheap as possible but at the same time not too bad but at the same time can deliver a basic quality stipulated by the law by the policy of course it's always an issue when it comes to uh rumah selangoku for private developer yeah they don't see it apa uh, 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 so as 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 architect as consultant we have to balance this all we have to balance the fact that this is a home that must be designed with some sort of dignity and respect we know the height the density is high it's going to be a 15 to 20 story building okay and we know to build such building is expensive lift are expensive mne are expensive plumbing expensive sewerage expensive infrastructure are expensive and developer don't want to build things at loss they don't want it's no project to them right they don't want uh, to be at loss so as architect you have to balance all these things yes okay and how do i do that in my practice what and what does it mean by balancing it all okay so from now uh, we have talked about the what the what part of 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 rsku now this is the how part of rsku the how do i do this in the office yeah to juggle within the numbers imposed by authority the cost stipulated by the by the developer the ideals of home wanted by the purchaser and here i am we have to brief we have to balance the brief so i'm using a case study of my own project rsku in bandar bukit raja in klang bbr uh, completed a year ago Uh, people already moving in dah siap ccc semua total number 660 660 unit okay so the tools of me designing it is i always break it down into four parts uh we we always want to design a good site planning okay this will be designed in tandem with a uh, good block design i call it Uh, going down further it must be accompanied with a uh, 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 good unit layout and then to control the cost and everything choose the right material and construction method and work hand in hand with other engineers and 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 QS consultant to ensure uh, at this stage to ensure the cost can fit whatever that we have in mind here this uh, i call it as a design tools yeah and how do i do it okay. the authority says 
for this particular project, 660 unit. No compromise. Kapak, oh no, here is Kapak 1 is to 2. So I have to provide around 1,000, uh, I just ran out of the big, 1,400 Kapak Bay. Plenty, plenty of Kapak. The Orton stipulates I must uh, we uh, developer must provide one hall and one surau. Sebelum ni dia minta swimming pool. Tapi we manage to wave. No need to have swimming pool. Okay. The authority stipulates the selling price 220 ringgit uh, 200 ringgit per unit for the uh, for the small size and the big size is uh, what you call that uh, 250,000 ringgit per unit. And must comply all the base specs. So here, there's no compromise. Okay, this is what the developer want. And then, eh, no, sorry, this is what the the the, author, the housing authority want. The LPHS, eh, Lembaga Perumahan Tanah Selangor, is in their written gazette document. And then the, the developer says to me, "Yes, let's provide all the required numbers." And we are going to use these tools, this strategy, to ensure uh, we can build it cheaply. Okay. The first strategy is we need to minimize the number of blocks. Economics says that having one block is cheaper than having two blocks. Having three apartment blocks is cheaper than having two blocks. No, no, no. I'll say it about it. One is cheaper than two, two cheaper than three, three cheaper than four, so on and so forth. Yeah. So, upon exploring and exploring and exploring, we can get. At the first, I, I want to do more blocks, of course. That's our gesture as a designer. Because more blocks means more exclusive in its uh, feeling, in its half ownership feeling. Right? Uh, more blocks meaning less density per block. That is the general intuition of an architect. Tapi the cost doesn't doesn't allow that. Uh, I can fit about four blocks here, but the cost doesn't allow that. Meaning we have to have four sets of water tank, four sets of sewerage, four sets of uh, lift, four sets of corridors. So the cost doesn't allow that. Okay. Uh, to do one mega block, one big block is important. Is is you can do it technically, but it's not advisable because you end up having a 60 units per, per floor. That's way, that's way too dense, right? Uh, many social problems is arise out of a uh, high density block. So uh, the best bet is upon, upon exploring and exploring to have a two blocks configuration, but, but with an L-shaped uh, alignment. So this guy, so when the core is in the middle, this guy is split into half. Uh, uh, the, the footfall is being half. One travel here, one travel here. So, so you have less footfall in front of your house. So that's the first strategy, minimizing block. Okay. Minimizing block. And then the next strategy is, this is very important in terms of controlling cost, yeah? Minimizing surface car park vis-a-vis -vis minimizing maxi minimize elevated car park, which is this one, elevated car park, podium car park, and maximize surface car park. Surface car park is practically cheap. You do double loaded bay, that way, it's practically cheap. So in this manner, this is the perimeter road for Womba. And the strategy is, a no-brainer. Put all the car parks at its at its perimeter, right? And the remaining car park, put it on the multi-story parking. That's the only strategy. And to and the most efficient car park configuration is of course squareish. You can get car park efficiency of one is to three hundred twenty per square foot. One car park bay three hundred twenty per square foot. Okay, uh, that is a efficient number of kapak. If your number go high up, say one kapak is to 350 or 380, it means your kapak is not efficient. 
Okay. Now, the second request, sorry, the re second request from from uh, developer is, minute, developer is to separate car park and residential. Meaning this block and this block is must be totally separated. The reason is for the purpose of stage building. I'm sure I'm not sure whether you guys are familiar with the concept of billing. This is where the developer 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 charge the bank and bank will charge the house purchaser. Uh, meaning uh developer build the ground floor, they charge the bank, they get money, they get money from the bank. Yeah, because they get money from the bank, uh, and the bank charge uh, interest to the to the to the purchaser. Uh, it's a, it's quite a complex uh, process. Let me try to let me try to let me try to uh, uh, simplify. For a housing project, the developer can charge uh, can get money from the bank because all house owner get loan from the bank. So the developer can charge the money from the bank, but it's in a gradual uh, mode, in a gradual stage. Developer build the piling, they charge money to the bank. Developer build the structure of the building, they charge money to the bank, meaning bank can give them money. So those money, they use it for the purpose of construction. To, 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 so developer, that, uh, in fact, does not uh, use their own money. It's just they are using the bank's money to, to finance the construction uh, process. Okay. If the apartment sits on top of on top of podium car park, uh, the law says that it's difficult for the developer to charge money to the bank. They cannot do it because uh, in the in the schedule governed by the Housing Developers Act, the first charge money is podium car park. The second money can be charged is structure. So structure. So when you have parking, you have to complete all parking first. Then only you can charge the stage for house structure. So to build all this is expensive. To build all, all this first at the outer is expensive. Uh, a lot of uh, juta ringgit needed to, to build this. Right? So the best way is to separate this. So the developer can consistently charge money to the bank on this and at the same time get money to 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 to, to finance all the all the process. So why am I telling you all this? It is because by this one, two, three, four requests from the developer alone, it will already stipulate and dictate how your architecture look like it will already dictate how your site planning look like right uh, you are very much uh, tied up tied up with the configuration like this or like this uh, to, to, to do to do the block ni. or maybe you want to do the uh, podium car park here and then the apartment here and here right i've done that but the problem is this is too near looking at each other and then the podium car park, if this is the apartment, people from here going towards the car park is quite far. Uh, and the, the, the depth of this podium car park is too deep. So the daylight is difficult uh, to light up uh, the center part of the podium car park, for example. Uh, I have tried, sorry, I have tried doing this. And this is podium car park. Podium car park. This is apartment, apartment. But you need here, you need here is gonna face the carpark directly. Not good. So it's always a process. With this, with this alone, the site planning can go many ways. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll move along. Yeah. Okay. But the the toughest, the, the the always the toughest part of this process is all this need to be built at ninety ringgit per square foot. The construction cost, the construction cost, TCC. 
It must be built at RM90 per square foot. And and this is cheap, gentlemen, students. Very cheap. So to build cheaply is always a, 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 a challenge. Yeah? Okay. 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 Now as architects, what do I do? Developer impose this. Uh, no, authority impose this. Developer says this. So, so we make the best out of it, right? What from the sketches that I shown you just now, when we tweak the when we when we tweak the product here and there, when we tweak the block here and there, we start to discover design quality onto it. For example, when I put the multi-story car park here, there is a TNB line here, rentis, TNB line here. So this parking block act as a natural buffer, act as a good distance between between the apartment block and that uh, TNB uh, rentis. So that I that that we discover uh, number one. Number two, there is also a row of high. Uh, there's also a big highway here, besides the besides the what you call that um, rentis. So it makes the positioning of the multi-story parking like a nat natural place for it okay that's number one gesture number two gesture is um, if i were to do the block planning in that l shape here l shape here it create a natural surveillance uh, uh, space a garden space here which in turn creates a defensible space what i mean is Children who plays here, teenagers who uh, hang out here at this garden, at this kickabout area, they are su they are supervised uh, naturally by the unit who face towards that. Okay. Right. So that this natural surveillance make this a natural defensible space. Okay. And since this, so excuse me, and since this space is quite huge. Yeah, we put the uh, hall right in the middle, and the surau accompanying it. So these two elements, uh, communal space, becoming uh, the heart uh, of the of the of the open space, right? So what we have here is the hall can be doubled up with, uh, as a uh, wedding hall or multi-purpose hall. You can have indoor activity. The door are all collapsible, openable. And the indoor activity can opens up to outdoor activity. Okay, uh, and activity at the hall, people who wants to use the surau, here we go. Just next to it, right? There are two types of open space. One more active one, with children playground, kickball area, futsal 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 court, and another one is more passive, you no, know, for older folks to lay park around under the gazebos. Beside uh, before waiting to go to the to the to the surau, for example. So this kind of this kind of uh, dialogue do take place uh, within the constraint that we set up. Okay, right. Uh, when we so when we plan when we plan the the building the the block, we make sure the primary face is north and south north and south this is is better this is is better we minimize the one his, that is facing west okay that is also a huge consideration okay and i think the biggest the big uh, the biggest challenge in doing the uh, block planning is to make sure the outward view for each block doesn't look at each other too closely in this case this is the four this is a four side Penama block, yeah. So this guy outward view, outward view, outward view, outward view, inward view. But they are high up. They, 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 this block is high up. This is only five story. This is fifteen story. So this is high up on the lower floor. Yeah, they are they are closer to the to the garden. But this is this. But this is high up. Okay. So meaning this guy does not face the 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 the, the, the the next block too immediate 
doesn't doesn't place too immediate. It's not it's not too close. Yeah. So we want to to achieve that. Okay. Because with because I think these are the quality that makes the building that makes the the house as a home. Yeah. It gives a softness to the to the whole uh, project. Okay. So in the end, uh, guys, architecture in its true sense is not in this particular project. Yeah, it's not about aesthetic so much. It's not about aesthetic in the capital A. It's primarily, fundamentally, about problem solving. Yeah. So this is what I found out when handling thousands and thousands of units. Yeah. How best to ensure this guy doesn't face the next block too near, right? How best to design a podium car park not too deep so that uh, daylight can penetrate and give sense of security to your parking space. How best to design a podium car park that is easily accessible to the apartment, yeah? Uh, not too far. Okay. To me, if I can call it, it is an exercise in cheapness, but we do it with integrity. Okay. Where we save money on the building, we give back to the landscaping. We give back to the to the what you call that um um um, um, um uh, open space. Okay. We make sure uh, this space is safe for children by means of having an apartment yeah at the ground floor not parking not a tnb subsection here so that it gives a it, it gives a concept of natural surveillance yeah so people don't do vandalism at an open space because you are being seen by others right we lay park here oh, when the times come we go solid here uh, and this is the hall the hall have many doors for the for the activities to for the activities to uh, spill over here. So this is this is the guide out that takes place now. And with this, I think we are satisfying all the stakeholders: the house owner, the home buyer, authority, and the developer themselves. Okay. And in terms of block design, uh, okay. That now just now is uh, site planning. Oh, I think I've taken more than half an hour. I, 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 I'll keep it quick. Yeah. Okay. For the for the for the house uh, uh for the block planning, right? Single loaded corridor, ensuring uh high efficiency, eighty percent efficiency actually. Okay. Minimize wall girth. Wall girth, right? Air well, ensuring daylight enters the corridor. Certain gaps are being done to make sure, uh, apa nama, daylight enters the, uh, uh, the, 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 it's a naturally ventilated uh, corridor, right? And um, we are maximizing the dead ends, uh, ensuring all units are having naturally ventilated rooms, right? So these are the these are the criteria that we see that could enhance. The normal product uh, of, of affordable homes to be a livable uh, home. Okay. Just to make a quick perspective, for a normal apartment, free market apartment, the cost to build it is 180 ringgit per square foot. This is for the tower of apartment, podium car park, the facilities, swimming pool, the facilities of infra, everything is 180 ringgit. Uh, it is sold at unfixed selling area, meaning developer can put any price to it. And uh, with normal apartment, developer can get high profit margin, usually in the range of 25% to 30%. High profit margin, yeah. But for affordable homes, the cost to build it is always kept at 90 ringgit per square foot. 90, 92 ringgit, 93 ringgit. Because it is a, sorry, this is a fixed selling price. Right, so the developer have the, the developer can only make a very 
fix g d v gross development value against a uh, low g d c gross development cost this minus this they get a minimum profit margin those days uh, where the there's no uh, system construction ibs the old old time developer who built uh, affordable homes they are doing it at loss they are rugi tak tak buat untung pun loss at, like i mentioned negative 2% negative 3% but they are doing it at loss nowadays with system construction with a uh, uh, system homework for example with less wastage on site with fast delivery uh, apa nama system from contractors uh, developer can make positive uh, profit margin of 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 uh, affordable homes of 2% to 7%. Okay. Uh, I tak pernah dengar lagi lah developer make uh, 10% double digit apa nama profit of from 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 rumah langoku. Never. It's always this figure. So, a question of cost is always important. Yeah. Okay. So <coughs> so the so the unit type is always this. Uh, the authority to stipulate the size. 10,000, eh, uh, 1,000 per, per unit, eh, sorry, 1,000 square foot per unit, selling at 250k per unit, okay, uh, room size must be as per UBBL, all room must be natural ventilation, okay, uh, only this is our input, yeah, we do a three bay layout, as in a, a, a normal conventional apartment, enter, dining, dining, living, dining, living, balcony, one bay, okay, Master bedroom, toilet, one bay. Second bedroom, one bay. So these guys have good views, good views, good views. Yeah, all right. And inward, good ventilation, good lighting, good natural natural ventilation, I think. Right? Okay. Uh, only uh, bedroom three uh, and bath three in the yard have to compromise and faces the, faces the yard. Okay. So if you see this layout, it's very much the same with conventional apartment. Uh, that's why the challenge is how to build this uh, cheaply. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in RSKU, type B means um, 900 square feet. Also must provide one, two, three rooms and must be sell at 200,000 ringgit, one kapak. Right. And this is, we are, we are utilizing the same layout, just change the 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 proportion of the spaces uh, but all must be within ubbl okay the smallest uh, rsku is type a 700 square feet 42000 now guys building uh, selling something of this size at 40000 ringgit is a guarantee loss poor tak untung punya but authorities still impose this in rsku the way they impose is this Usually in a single development, they will ask for uh, type A, the big, uh, sorry, type A, the smallest one, eh, 10%. Type B or C, uh, uh, the rest lah, 90%. But this type A, you can only sell at this. It's, 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 it's too cheap if you ask me. Because, but the authority must have this. Because they are, they are selling this to the, T, T, sorry, T40, uh, the one who is a uh, household income less than 4,000 ringgit, if I'm not mistaken, to the 40. But developer have to build it. Uh. So the developer is going to build this at loss, but they will compensate this with other type, uh, type B and C, the one where they sell 250,000 ringgit. Yeah. Uh, okay. But although this is a, this is a small, smaller size, Smaller size, 700, 700 square feet. Designer must 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 design it with with the uh, with all the spaces. Ten feet of uh, uh, living dining uh, width. All the room must be by uh, by law. Punya width. The smallest size, the smallest the smallest length of wall is two meters. So we got it two point two meter for example. The size must be as per by law. Two bedrooms, a, a two toilet, two with yard. But kitchen is only a small stretch lah. But it must function as a three bedroom house. Okay. 
with these strategies and with this uh, technique in mind, we repeat it from projects to projects. Here I am having a job in Portland, 900 unit RSKU for one developer, YRB Highcom. Use the same strategy. I will have one project in Bukit Jurutong, 990 units RSKU. Use the same strategy. Okay, you have your internal defensible space, L shaped apartment, multi story car park, another two blocks. This is this is a tougher project because you need uh, the density is one is two, 120. So a lot of small small land size but high density, four blocks, and and you have to have shops at the front. Okay, and Elimina we repeat the same strategy. This is one thousand six hundred units. Yeah, blocks and blocks, acres and acres of RSKU. This is in Bukit Raja. Okay. Uh, where land doesn't permit, the tanah too kecil sangat, we'll tell the developer you don't have a choice but to put the podium kapal down there and then the apartment on top, which is this. I cannot separate it because the land is so small. Because the land is so small. Because I, we don't want uh the ground the ground space to be 100 percent kapak so this is the this is the defensible area this is the green space okay this is a uh, exercise was done in, in kl under pp1 am okay this is rumah week for uh, dbkl right wherever we we do uh, apartment rsk uh, affordable homes Two developer, what they want is do the kapak here and do the green area here, apartment, apartment. But this is too close, too close to each other. We are we are so uncomfortable. We have to persuade the client. You lost the opportunity to build early, to to claim payment from bank early. Put the kapak here, and then you have your uh, apartment right over here because the rent is so 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 small. Because we still feel the need that having an open space is is fundamental yeah okay okay i'm about to end uh we start at 9 30 wow one and a half hour uh, a self-assessment a bit lah. is this ideal is, is what is what we did uh an ideal thing can we still innovate but within the parameter so the keyword is innovate okay if we look elsewhere, what others are doing all over the world, I think, yes, we can innovate, but some things got to give. Meaning, when I look at upper number, uh, social housing in Amsterdam, done by architects MRDV, eh? MRDV, famous architect, this is their social housing. It's way too nice. Yeah? But man, if I were to do this, this balcony would eat up the the, the floor area right so so something's got to give yeah. if i were to do this uh, what uh alejandro aravena doing in uh, mexico under his office elemental they did half half house and then an open space for people to expand on their own nice very innovative i love it but this is only good for low density. Can we exploit for high density? Only time can tell. This is uh, Bjarke Inkels, uh, Bjarke Ingels uh, architects. They did, they did it in Netherlands. Superb, good looking housing. But man, aren't these materials expensive? I, I would love to do big size window, but glass are more expensive than, than concrete wall. So that has to compromise. This is such a lovely social housing in Vienna. But my corridor can only afford cement render. They are doing it in timber. We can only afford plastic and paint and skim coat. And they are doing it in timber. Uh, and they, they can clear their facade for even for social housing. I wonder how much they sell this for. This is one in Japan. 
uh, by Sana uh, Ryu Nishizawa and the other lady. But doing this, curvature, phew, it's expensive to have an external, to have an external, apa nama, window shutter, cost money. So they classify it as social housing in Japan, but I don't know how much they sell this. But of course, we don't want to do this. What you, what you saw in Hong Kong, Taipei, Macau, they built, they built 50 story, super high density, one is to 200 density of social housing. We don't want to go here. Yeah. But at least when we don't want to be there, so for now, I'll settle for this. I'll settle for this affordable housing uh, show you just now, where the house are secured, where the cars are at least dry, good shade, and you walk not so far from the car park to the lift, goes up, go to your unit, and your unit doesn't face, doesn't face another apartment like this. You, your unit have outward view. You don't have big windows, but at least it's not a pokey, uh, poor number, step onto punch holes, right? Where your kids can play safely and neighbors can see and from your house you can see your kids play safely and you have a good connection from car park to the unit and we design and we design the facilities space the surau here the hall with such uh, airiness and dignity yeah it's cozy and the hall is this is the surau for example right it is currently the heart of the community majority is uh, Muslim but anyway and the hall they can use a sports uh, event for a, a wedding hall open up this door join up to the to the to the garden just now and at last at least the house owner can have this thousand square feet of apartment and call it their home yeah living dining kitchen go to your bedroom right on the inside you can tell whether this is a 500,000 ringgit property or a, 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 a 200 ringgit property. Whether this is affordable home or this is a free market. Free market. So yes, innovation can take place. And, 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 and with that, I end my presentation. I hope my sharing will be good. I'm very much... I'm very much uh, nervous uh, presenting online because there's no feedback. I cannot see your face, whether I'm too long, speaking too long or too fast. So uh, that's all. Uh, Dr. Zik, over to you. Okay, thank you, Architect Effendi. What was right, supposed to be a 20-minute lecture <laughs> is now stretched so... all the way to one hour and a half. <laughs> so I think it's... A... I'm so... But it's okay, it's okay. It's too long. Yeah, it's a it's a very informative lecture. I love it. Uh, I think uh, it will always be beneficial to the students, lah. And I hope the students can. I didn't can, time, I didn't uh, time the, the the speech. I think I <laughs> I think it's only thirty minutes. It's only sixty slides, but it goes on yeah. and on. My goodness. <laughs> But but it was fun. It was fun. Uh, it was a fun lecture. Uh, th that is why I usually give like two hour long uh, session to the invited speaker so that they can speak uh, freely and without any limitation lah, basically. Okay. So uh, actually, Fendi, we we actually have a question here from uh, from the student actually from sure, Arifa. Sure. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. Uh, she asked that uh, as a designer, okay, what do you think of the current issue? uh happening in affordable housing basically it's a living condition issue so uh, is it because of the layout design which is the designer's fault or is it because of the people themselves staying there so is there any possibility to improve the current conditions from designers pro, uh, point of view if you're asking about maintenance uh, the living quality it boils down to maintenance of the of the property Boils down to that actually. Uh, if you ask me, most uh, private housing, uh, the most developer, uh, most affordable housing in Malaysia, are done quite okay. What makes it run down? What makes it uh, not suitable of inhabitant? Its inhabitant are because of its maintenance. 
to to uh, for example to live and stay in the house that I made, that I showed just now the one that we designed you need to pay maintenance charges of 170 ringgit per month with that 170 ringgit times 600 units it is good enough pool of money to hire a good joint management uh, to have a good management office what joint management body to hire a good maintenance company it's enough there's plenty of sinking fund to maintain the lift maintain the corridor wash every day clean up the clogging to kabumbum repainting is enough but the current condition yang you nampak sekarang ni the problem is people don't pay the maintenance charges orang yang menyewa tak bayar the house owner tak bayar they left in neglect when there's no money there's no one that when there's no money there's no maintenance and when there's no maintenance you you you'll get a broken window effect satu tempat rosak will effect tempat lain satu koridor clog dengan air apa nama water ponding tempat-tempat lain pun ada elemen yang sama sebab tak dibersihkan the main problem is tak bayar maintenance <laughs> you ask me that's a problem our government don't have money to maintain all this don't have is the responsible responsibility of the house owner for their own property and this responsibility is stipulated by law it's under building maintenance act uh, jmb's act apa uh, nama joint management act is even written down some some part of it in strata title act there's about three or four act that governs housing maintenance they want still tak bayar lah that's my so if you ask me the current living condition is no longer the responsibility of designer developer authority is the responsibility of the inhabitant to lady Okay, uh, thank you Akita Effendi for the explanation. I hope uh, that answers your question, Arifa. So students, uh, do you have any other question to ask Akita Effendi? Since we have uh, like uh, basically around 10 minutes more. So if you have any question, please you can open your mic and ask directly or you can just type in in the uh, chat section. I hope you guys do listen to it. Kalau tidak penat, saya cakap sama seorang. But apa, it's okay. Uh, kalau let's say ada yang tertidur ke apa kan. Uh, actually, I have a recording. I I I, rec I am recording the session. So later on, I will uh, share it with the rest of the students lah. Okay, so any question guys? Any question? Uh, I have a question. Okay, uh, it is actually from our one of our head panels, Dr. Azrin. Yeah. Hi Azrin. Hi. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, I just want to ask um, about um, apa tu? Tadi you you mentioned that uh, the the reason why the the car park is separated from the blocks is because of how the pavement is structured by the banks, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, but in terms of like the cost, does it actually uh, is there any large difference between like you know having a podium car park and a separate block, or uh, is just uh, is it just because of how the payment is structured that developers actually go for that uh we have run a cost benefit analysis uh, comparing podium car park and then on top of that is a tower or oh. separating it uh, it is much cheaper to build it separately separate in a separate manner because okay. uh, the come uh, the cost comes from uh, the structure for a higher building is much more expensive compared to the separated ones uh, structure, uh, piling, uh, piling cost, uh, structure cost, and the third cost, uh, the, the third, the third contributing cost is uh, the higher the building goes, the M and E cost uh, goes exponentially high, because you need to have brick tanks, you need to have better pumps, you need to have uh, number, uh, bigger pipes, for example, as compared to uh, lower buildings. So we have run the cost and cost benefit analysis, uh. Okay. Um, uh, it, it, it is not marginal actually. I think the difference is around 25%, 20% more. Okay, so that's quite It is quite substantial. Mm. Okay, thank you. But the payment structure comes from HDA actually, uh, Housing Developers Act, uh, Schedule G and uh, Schedule H, if I'm not mistaken, under Strata Title Act, under, under Strata Title Building. Uh, developer cannot build 
the second stage. The first stage is filing. Mm -hmm. They will build the bank. Uh, house owner buyer interest. Uh, that bank's money will be rolling for construction. The second stage too, from the filing is the structure of the building. So from build from for, to to com uh, they they must complete the structure, but they must complete the structure of the car park also. So so banyak duit lah they perlukan untuk complete the car park structure. Tapi mm. you separate it, you only complete the structure of the apartment, the apartment floor, the structure the, the structure of the unit itself. Itu cepat. Itu you, you, you boleh build cepat. You get your money up fast. Tapi kalau ada kapal in between, ah, pedat lah. You can, uh, you have to fork out your own money to build level by level by level by level. Sampai the first unit itu baru you boleh build. So level don't want that. Jadi kapal ni empat tingkat, it cost around no, thirty million ringgit. So it's expensive lah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank right. you, to, uh, Dr. Azrin, for the question. Uh, any other question? Before we wrap up the lecture input session, okay. Uh, please be noted, yeah, students. Uh, because uh, tomorrow we going to have another lecture. Uh, lecture input zero three by Dr. Tuku Intan. Uh, it's about active and passive building system. So, please don't miss uh, the lecture input tomorrow. Okay. So, any other question before I wrap up the session? No. Okay, I believe that we have no more question. So I would like to say thank you again to Architect FND Saleh for no, no problem. You're welcome. very informative lecture. Uh, thank you very much. So I hope I can see you in the next uh face to face quick session lah in KL. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, we catch up. Uh, bro, I will just for, for 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 dragging a bit on the timing, and um, <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I should have time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, carried away when you are presenting things. Okay, so guys, uh, hopefully it's a uh, of uh, beneficial. You can you can again uh, take away here and there. Uh, for um, uh, because as architects, uh, designing affordable homes is inevitable. I think most office in Malaysia will get opportunity lah to design affordable homes. Uh, in their career, in their lifetime, at least once, at least once. So hopefully it can be a, 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 a good uh, benefit uh, to the students actually. And with that, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zik, for inviting me. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, thank you. So thank you to the uh, lecturers as well who are present in this sure. session. So thank you again, yeah. Architect Fendi. And uh, for the students, you can uh, you can go to your panel for your studio session lah after this. Okay. All right. Thank you very much all. Bye-bye. See you.